please welcome the 2018 under 30 speech winner, 14 year old Madison Spanadimos. Wow. Before I get started, I want to thank the Centennial Institute in Colorado Christian University for hosting this summit. I remember attending my first conservative conference a little over a year ago, and it was there that I had my first introduction to what it really means to be a conservative and the responsibility that we have as Americans to defend our Constitution and defend our values. From this point on, I was inspired to stand up for these principles on my campus and in my community. I'd also like to thank Red Alert Politics for sponsoring this contest. The idea that a young 14-year-old girl will take the same stage as the Attorney General of the United States, who, yes, I am hoping will write my absent note back to school on Monday, is a direct testament to the American dream. It's a testament to what I believe is one of America's greatest promise. The promise that if you put your mind to something and work tirelessly for it, you certainly can accomplish it. Take the 2016 election. Before June of 2015, Donald Trump was one of America's most successful businessmen. He took his father's business and grew it into a billion dollar company. I highly doubt he would have been able to accomplish this if America felt the burn, taxing all Americans at inconceivable rates, creating an unemployment boom instead of an economic one, or nationalizing health care, but really handing Americans a death sentence due to extremely long waiting periods and poor quality of medical care, all consequences of so-called free and fair health care. The left desperately needs to take a reality check. Have they heard of Venezuela, the VA under President Obama, or little Alfie Evans? Fortunately for these United States, American patriots took this reality check. In November of 2016, they marched to the ballot box, demanded change, and voted for a stronger, more prosperous America. They voted for a president who would stand up to our adversaries and stand with our allies. The silent majority voted for someone who would negotiate with America's best interests at heart, bringing home American prisoners, not sending terrorists back to the battlefield. They said no to illegal immigration across our southern border, and yes, I'll say it, against vicious gangs. They stood up for Second Amendment rights, understanding there is no America without this amendment and they voted against worthless government spending. Like, did you know that the State Department used your taxpayer dollars to buy more likes on Facebook because the page wasn't getting enough attention? Or when nearly $5 million was given to the University of Tennessee because they wanted students to wear fruit and vegetable costumes around campus to encourage healthy eating? I really highly doubt that that did anything. And lastly, they voted to put money in the pockets of all Americans, even though it's apparently crumbs to some millionaire congresswoman who is the voice for our poorest Americans. Now, if we take a look at President Trump's accomplishments, and we know there are so many, and compare them to the fake news media's coverage of them, you'd think we'd have a totally different president. While the media is busy worrying about President Trump's diet and calorie intake, and though we thank them for their concern about his health, the average American is worrying less about the threat of nuclear war and how he or she will put food on the table. While the media ceaselessly covers the so-called Russia investigation, or witch hunt as some of us like to call it, the stock market is growing. And while James Comey is on virtually every primetime news show ranting about his higher loyalty, which let's be real, it's really to the never Trump establishment, President Trump is only loyal to us. And of course, as we all know, Donald Trump is extremely anti-woman, would never put women in his cabinet or senior staff, and certainly would not have just had Gina Haspel appointed as the first CIA director. And we also know that President Trump is certainly a racist and never would pardon any African-Americans ever, right? Now, we take this double standard 
it's evident everywhere, but especially in terms of our youngest Americans. We recently saw two terrible, horrific tragedies in Santa Fe, Texas, in Parkland, Florida. Instead of reporting on the events of these tragedies, the media decided to focus on the Never Again movement. They were quick to label all high school students as staunch gun control advocates. And if I had some advice to the students who were walking out, I would tell them to walk back in to school, open up their textbooks, and learn about what dictators do before assuming power. And it has something to do with taking away your right to bear arms. And I have some good news for you. There are many studies and much research that leads us to the conclusion that Generation Z, which is comprised of anyone born after 1995, will be the most conservative generation since World War II. They're fundamentally pro-freedom, have capitalist-leading views, and are closer to the right on social issues than you may think, especially pro-life issues. What's even more remarkable about how the conservative movement is growing among young people is the environment in which they're becoming conservative. Just look at our higher education. The majority of colleges employ all liberal professors, have textbooks that create a history narrative that's manipulated to please the left, and our media has its own version of the truth. There are trigger warnings and safe spaces everywhere you turn on campus. And professors, well, they're so biased against conservative students, some fear speaking out in support of capitalism or even admitting that Donald Trump is president because they don't want to be downgraded. I've had this experience myself, and so have many others. So yet again, it's begging the question, how are students becoming more conservative? It's not a simple answer. And maybe it has to do with students learning from their parents. We should never question the sanctity of the traditional American family or the one conservative teacher they'll have throughout their school career. But I think there are two ideas that are really helping our movement out, and it's freedom and social media. So imagine you're a young college student, you're going off to school for the first time, you're excited to play a role in your future and make decisions for yourself. If you take that idea, it aligns directly with conservative principles. As conservatives, we believe that businesses should make decisions that are best for their consumers and their employees themselves. They don't need government to step in and make them for them. Take a look at states' rights. How could one possibly argue that California and Texas have the same needs? It's simple, you can't. And whether it be freedom of the press, as we love being able to choose Fox News over CNN, or freedom to assemble, or freedom to practice the religion of your choice, Americans love freedom. So why aren't some voting for politicians who value freedom? Another critical idea here is social media. Whether we like it or not, social networking sites are consumed by politics. Whether it be your grandfather, who's a World War II veteran, having a polite but not so polite conversation with your cousin, who enjoys wearing a grabs back t-shirt, or the fake news article from impeachtrump.com in your newsfeed, Social media is consumed by politics. And what really doesn't help is the possibility that the social networking sites themselves are playing a role in this misinformation epidemic. Back to the same question, how are students becoming more conservative? Well, our movement is lucky because we have some fantastic websites and sources that are helping to spread the facts about the issues. Whether it be articles from sources like Red Alert Politics, The Daily Wire, Turning Point News, Future Female Leader, <laughs> or Lone Conservative, Students are learning the facts clearly, concisely, and are learning all sides of the issue. Whether it be videos from PragerU, when students are given the facts and not just the feelings, they will make educated decisions. Now, this all sounds great, right? The conservative movement's growing, students are becoming more conservative, so, you know, this is okay, we don't have to vote in the midterm elections, right? We can kind of take a break. That couldn't be farther from the truth. Unless you envision an America with President Bernie Sanders and Vice President Elizabeth Warren, which just raised my blood pressure. I don't know if that was just me or you guys too. So what can you do? You must get involved however you can. It is absolutely crucial. In addition, if I could leave you one final piece of advice, it would be to never forget the American heroes who gave their lives to serve this country. If we keep them in mind and realize that we're all working together 
to establish a better America for our children, I think we certainly will accomplish pres President Reagan's shining city on the hill. And if I can leave you with one final phrase, it would be borrowed from Pennsylvania Avenue. And I think you know where I'm going with this. It would be to make America great again. Thank you so much. Stay out here, stay out here, stay out here. Yeah. Friends, Madison Spanadimos. The future of this country is strong with leaders like this. We are proud of you. Thank you so much. 14 years old. That's amazing. Thank you, Madison.